Welcome, Michael Wickerson here, doing some fun things with Python. And I'm going to make a series, and I'm actually going to make a new um, YouTube channel that's just specific to Sandbox with uh, Python and Grasshopper. So right here, I'm going to start with some really basic coding, not scripted beautifully, because it's highly repetitive. It looks like a lot of cut and paste. But you can see what's actually happening here, using an 8-ball script. Uh, with an import random in Python, uh, testing if data is coming in. I've just put a timer on it. I can set this timer to whatever I want. Uh, it will choose, it will output some text, but it also outputs a number. And what's happening with that is, without getting too detailed, um, I've got a nice little timer on here. Any data can be put into a data recorder at any speed you want. Speed it right up if you want it to change drastically. You can bake it while you're going along. Pretty fast scripts. Every two seconds, we can change the script if you want. Um, the list length changes, and you can reset it, and you can set it again. And there it goes, and it's just clicking through, um, doing a count. Instead of a button, all it was was triggering this game with a button. I have a circle that's basically right dead center, and it has a surface, and that circle is a little bit of a wandering game that I've been playing with as it moves out. Um, it's actually moving up uh, currently, all of these little spheres. So what's kind of nice is if I took off everything else, you'd see these little tiny spheres in here as they're moving. But what they're actually doing is they are moving a geometry from one to the next in the x and the z direction stepping out like a walker um, so i'm just repeating that with cut paste cut paste cut and paste and changing the vector you could do that iteratively through python you could do that iteratively through hoop snake but this is a nice visual of how the script kind of walks in and you see what's happening and then i take all my data i take all those little circles and what I'm doing with those circles is I'm actually finding the centroid and controlling a surface, uh, which you see that's happening here on the side. I guess it's easiest to see here. The surface is this uh, shape that's being made here by deprepping those surfaces. They don't have to be slow like surfaces, but this shape is being generated for a vessel. And you see it's thin at times, it's thicker at times. Um, but when you have a concept of this, there's a few bugging out, obviously, for a shape. Um, you can take those edges as curves, and those curves are just simply joined together and put through a revolution tool. That's it. Uh, pretty simple. And then the timer is setting that and running it. Uh, and like I said, I could be baking it as I go, displacing it by orient. Pretty simple stuff to start, but it's a nice little bit of acrobatics that will get you writing a little bit of Python script to learn your if-else conditionals, get you into a library, the random library, allow you to get into the random, uh, random int uh, section of that module, and generate something so familiar to potters, to anybody that's just coming up and making things. And like I said, nice little vessels. You don't know the randomness of it as it's stepping out. It really depends on the game of 8-ball and what turns up. And what's nice is you have a little statement that says, uh, reply hazy, ask again later, um, and make a move, push a button. That's all it's asking you to do. Now, you could make a move and push a button by installing this. Uh, so you take all of this data here and plug it into here. And then you could change your shape by just having that iteration. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But what a way to think about generating a shape that if you liked it, you could sit over here and you could grab a little bake. You could have uh, you could have a plug-in for bake, which I actually use. You have to be careful with uh, subdivision tools. Not object, not every object bake works with sub uh, subdivisions. So that's an older plug-in uh, before they did that. So that was a problem I was having earlier. So say I like that shape, boom, bake it, and there you go. You get your little form. You can grab it here, you can set it off to the side, and uh, there you go. You like one shape that you've made, you've got a nice little vessel uh, made from a an 8-ball game in Python. So that's that's baked to true. I'm going to put it to false. I'm going to go back over here, and uh, actually, what I may end up doing is just grabbing my toggle and having my control script for making geometries. There it is. So all I have to do is see this and go back over, take a look at what I made, and hit go and that one's pretty nice it's pretty thin there's nothing wrong with that little edge sure bake it and there you go grab that one move it over here you got two objects made there you go what a way to generate 
some shapes and forms. Nothing tricky. Um, it's computational. It's uh, using a little bit of scripting. Um, I'm going to take that to false again. Bake this one. What a cute little one there. So we'll take that one see what ended up happening. I think it worked. And we'll just grab that one and put that over in our little collection here. And you can script this to move things and do things as you want. But a nice beginning to a sandbox. I think the beginning of a really nice video series that's going to be playful. I'm not going to walk through and teach all these. I'm just going to put them on GitHub so you can access them to play with them. So you're, you're getting in here. You're playing around with a bit of scripts. Um, like I said, if you like if you like timers, that's a nice little technique that I don't know if you get a minus. Uh, probably came up with it and excited me with it. Let's put that in. There you go. We're changing every two seconds. The problem is my bake's on. <laughs> so we're baking every two seconds as well. So you probably want to wait and see if you want to bake. If there's something you like, you better bake fast because uh, if you want that one, you got to cook it. And then you got to take it off. Otherwise, you're baking the next one. So it's a little, you might want to slow it down and work at the pace that you can. And believe me, you can slow it down to anything you want. And you're both give yourself five seconds of thinking of form and see if you actually want it. So pretty nice uh, wrapping your head around the powers of Grasshopper. Like I said, playfully having fun with it. Um, zoom extends all. You get this little generation artist view. And uh, just start making models and have fun. Uh, that's what it's all about. I don't think I can zoom if I'm on. Oh, yeah, I did. I thought I could zoom in there. Oh, if I do it, I forgot the whole shape is bigger. So there's a little visualization of the script, the iterative method that you probably want to end up writing better in script because you don't want to cut and paste because that's sloppy code. But really, what's the rush when you're trying to discover new things? Let somebody else optimize it or optimize it when you get something you really like. Anyhow, six and a half minutes, beginning of a new video series. I hope people find this helpful. I hope they find a lot of tricks in this. I'm going to be I'm going to playful and I'm going to go through all my scripts that I can. I think this one's a pretty good idea of it because if I go... Uh, to that first script right here, uh, that was uh, B3. I think I can jump over to chapter four, B3E, that's book two. Uh, I just have to get it figured out as to what I want to bring in. Um, but there's so many scripts and so many Python scripts to play with, it's going to be pretty fun to figure out. Anyway, thanks for watching.